Hello everybody, welcome to my show. My balls is totally moving, new and improving. Now damn, we get back up. I've got the heart and desire, my balls are on fire. Ready to take us to the top and stuff. Welcome to the show. Did you know that your mom is a... Oh, blog, I reckon. Oh, good day. Yep. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to the mums. Uh, a, a fan hit me up and said that they played the Jason L show to their mum, and now their mum likes the show, and they like my comedy where I talk about lady stuff that I don't want to say anything offensive in the first ten minutes because I was told that that's not a good idea, and if you want to be smart in podcasting. Don't say that word until 10 minutes, which is tough because I'm me and that makes it real difficult. It's like they're almost saying, you know what we don't need is Jason Ellis. Same with OnlyFans on Twitter. I think that I might be a shadow band guy because my, you could say penis, right? That's, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's on the internet. Anatomical. Oh, oh yeah. Speaking of. Uh, being nude and being on the internet. Malice is here, everybody. Hey! It's huge. It's huge. Malice is a good friend of mine. People that don't know Malice, yes, crowd, go for it. Yeah. Woo. She is a good friend who is one of the most legendary uh, stage performers of our time. And now she is has moved on to uh the fans only <gasps> and it's great it's my favorite only fans account every time i see it i i want to do stuff that i can't say for another <laughs> seven minutes <laughs> don't hype it up too much because a lot of people might be expecting some hardcore you know i'm pretty you much just a said- it's okay i'm a t oh it's okay that's the thing you're not supposed to say no nah, you can say that one it's the f one Okay, I didn't do it. Yeah. And I just thought I'd leave for a little bit too. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> it's too late now. It might be. <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess some people do more hardcore stuff, but I have I have some of their accounts too. I guess it depends on what you're into. I don't know if I could handle watching other people do things with you. I'll get jealous. Yeah, I don't think I could handle it either. Right. That's yeah. That's going to slow it down. Yeah, that's going to slow down a lot. Pretty much end it, really. <laughs> you turn the microphone to your face. Make it go back into my throat. Oh. Do you, do you, because you're not like a very hoary person at all. And you're, Unfortunately. you, you reek of sex. Like you're a very sexy person. Does it get annoying that, because people probably talk to you in a way where it's just all about, you know, I mean, what's up kind of stuff. And you're like, actually, I just like my dogs and like breakfast burritos or sorry, bean burritos. Is that what you like? Yeah. 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 The the thing is, it, it, I mean, I, as a person who's been a sex worker for over 20 years, I love people desiring me. Yeah. So I don't care what they say. They can say they want to like, you know, I don't know, creep on my face all day. I don't care. Um, but the, the only thing that... You know, it's just if people don't understand some, not everybody is available for real life services. Some people are, and those ones will offer it. Usually you don't usually have to ask, but like, I'm not, uh, I don't do anything with people in real life. I'm just a, Uh, I like it. I like to tease. I've always loved to tease. I like to make people frustrated. That's my thing. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job. Yes. I'm sexually, I've been sexually frustrated by you for, well. yes. I don't know, yeah. 15 years. That's the goal. <laughs> it's, dry, it's tearing me apart, Jonathan. I Going on a, over a decade, decade and a half. Good just work. let me. It just, it just, I, it, I get off so much more on the fact that, that 
it hasn't happened yet. It's yeah. just, to me, it's like, Stop um, doing that. Cause well, I like the tension too. Cause I don't have a lot of people that, um, I have sexual tension with. And then, uh, so when I do, I like to keep it as long as possible, you know? Wait, so do I you do- have sexual tension with me? Oh yeah. We've always oh. had sexual tension. Oh, see that yeah. guys. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm caught right in the middle. This is exciting. Yeah. I can, can you feel, feel it? it? I feel it on both do you feel sides. It? I do a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Cool. This, this awesome. is recorded too. I know. Now everyone knows. But wait, when you say that you've been a sex worker for 20 years, can you clarify what that means? Sex worker is an umbrella term. It, it, it covers everybody in the sex industry, including strippers. Okay. And so I've been a stripper. And that's the thing is there, there to me, I don't really differentiate between stripper or a uh, prostitute or anything. Nobody's better or worse than anybody else. We're mm-hmm. all in the game. You know, we're all hustling. We all just have, because you know me, if you really think about it, a lot of, you know, and I don't think actually probably prostitutes, not the proper term anymore. <laughs> What is it? I'm, it's pro. I don't even know. I'm, Escort. I'm, I'm also outdated, you guys. I'm. I'm. You know, I'm about to be 48. I need to like probably learn some new terms. But you um, look. Incre- I'll be 48 in wow. April, yeah. so it's not yet. You look great. But it's coming up. You look great. Yeah, she's um, hot. But I've been. You know, I haven't been in the scene for a while. I've been right. holed up in my apartment taking pictures in my bathroom. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably noticed that there's a there's a strange uh, tall boys of beer in bottled water section at your local stores. Well, it's not beer; it's actually water, and it's called liquid death. That's right, everybody. If you don't know what liquid death is, I don't know what happened to you. Maybe you were in a coma. That could happen, and you just got out, and you're like, "I gotta catch the Jason Ellis podcast." You guys, you that just woke up. Liquid Death has got water, it's got bubble water, it's got bubble flavored water, they got merchandise, they got it all, they're the coolest, they're the sh- they're really good, I almost cussed, they're really good, and I bought into the company because I like it so much, and you can find Liquid Death Mountain Water on Amazon or retailers near you, and the Jason L Show listeners get 20% off, oh yeah, 20%. off their first uh, Liquid Death Apparel purchase available available really? exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash Alice. So make sure you use that code, everybody, to get yourself the hottest product in the world right now. Liquiddeath.com slash Alice. Yeah, man, Factor 75, this new year you've got goals. Factor is here to help uh, you achieve each and every one of them. Save time and have energy. You will uh, need to tackle everything. Your to-do list with Factor is ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. Factor is not... Uh, at, wait, get Factor and not only skip the trip to the grocery store, but skip the, the chopping, the prepping, and cleaning it, cleaning it up too. Factor Fresh, never frozen meals are ready in two minutes all you have to do is heat it and enjoy. No matter what your lifestyle factor is here, meals can help uh, you live your fullest life with keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, protein plus meals, and the menu with each with each week prepared by chefs that and approved by d- dietitians. Each meal has all the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long. With 34 chef prepared. D to tell you wait what's that word <laughs> dietarian 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 <laughs> approved weekly options they're always something new to try plus you can uh you can uh, you can round out your meal with a replenish your snack supply with an apart with an assortment shut up katie of 36 quick bites Smoothies, juices, and more satisfying add-ons. Looking for, uh, uh, looking to cut back on takeout? Get Factor instead. Not only Factor cheaper than takeout, but meals are ready quicker than restaurants deliver. In two minutes, Bob will be your uncle. Call the action, everybody. So listen, you're going to get fit, get a great, great meals. You're going to get a fat discount. Head to factor75.com slash Alice 60. Use the code Ellis60 and get 60% off! 60! It's not! That is over half! 
Off your first box, that's code Ellis60 at factor75.com slash Ellis60. Get 60% off your first box. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but I just think that, you know, it's always been kind of like there was for years like a thing is like, I'm a stripper. I'm not a prostitute. I'm a pole uh, teacher. I'm not a stripper. You know, like all that kind of like. And I, I think we're all doing the same thing. And what I was going to say is a lot of those, you know, people that are supposedly, you know, prostitutes or whatever you want, whatever this was for you, girl, call that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm getting canceled. I know it. But anyways, um, are, um, a lot of them don't actually have sex with their clients either. Oh. A lot of them go home with people that just want to be like held or talked to or pissed on or, you know. How is that much different than what we're doing? So it's a blanket term. I think I respect that. I think she's yeah. right. It's all sex. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. Yeah. People are paying for some kind of sexual. Right. I'm sorry, but also I I I would include everyone who's trading dinners for sex also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Preach. Of course, they're not doing that, but they're, you know, like, I think what's the difference? Yeah, there there isn't. If anything, it might be worse because at least in this game, you know you're paying for it. Mm. Like, I feel like a lot of girls that take guys on dates, I'm sure it goes the other way too, but mm -hmm. probably more often girls do this where they don't like the person. Right. But they lead on that they do yep. to get the, the meal and the purse. Yep. At least like with a escort or whatever, it's like, I'm going to give you money and you're going to bone me. Speaking of, something happened this week with the new law in California regarding... Yeah. Uh, whatever the word is, not prostitution, sex workers. I could be wrong. That could still even be the term. I just feel like it seems like wrong now because everything seems wrong now. So I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. But what's the new law? No, the new law. And, and I could be totally You know a wrong. lot about new laws. Yeah, no, I, I looked do. it up too. I, I'm really litigious. <laughs> I keep it my was, eye on. It, it's been all over social media. Yeah, it's been all over. I think the governor passed a bill. I don't know if it's been signed yet that essentially uh, prostitution you cannot be prosecuted for it. That it's oh not that it's legal. There's not right. gonna be brothels in but California. You don't go to jail but if for you're it. on the street and you're soliciting sex, you're not gonna go to jail. Decriminalization. For it. There you go. I feel like it's a little bit gross, but if you have an orgasm, especially guys, there if you don't have one, depending on who 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 you are, how many of these that you have can kind of uh make your day or break it i feel like some people need the release you know obviously you can get it from all si all kinds of things but that one is pretty helpful in making you feel better about your day and it's a service you know like a massage to me i remember when i was younger and i wasn't allowed to sleep with other people i get a massage and a lady would pull my gherkin <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me right now. I feel like this whole podcast world's got me speaking a different language. Um, it's you massage, you massage me gherkin, mate. Yeah. <laughs> My gherkin. You yeah, you just, you you just, it's, it's such a great word. You're just I massaging me gherkin. Mm -hmm. I'm telling my kids that tonight. You massage me feet. It's, it's your gherkin. And sometimes when they massage feet, they do this stroke. Sure. And then they just do that on me. On me. On, on me, me gherkin. On me gherkin, mate. <laughs> yeah. And Bob's your uncle. You're off and you're ready to go about your day. See. Like, I would really appreciate one before I do stand up tonight. <laughs> and and then there are the people. Right. And it's true. You, people, some people need that. And there are some people that. And, and this is an unfortunate thing that there are some people personality wise or other reasons that there is no other way for them to get it besides to pay for it. Mm. Yeah. Then there's that. What about if you're hideous? Yeah. Or like a loser. Like my cousin Alan. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying I, to. I know, but some, that, I was trying to be polite about it, but right. Some people are losers. Oh, I'm a loser too in certain aspects of life. <laughs> let's read a book together. Loser. You know, that's a loser. Uh, you know, let's add up some stuff. Loser. So I'm not good at everything. And it doesn't matter if you're good or not. It's just like a thing where people, you show up and people go, oh, and it's not fair. But it's like a judgmental thing that a lot of humans just have instinctively to be like, whoa, easy. What's up with the pants? You know, if you've got like, you know, you're just really maybe you got a little bit of drool or, you know, you got a stain and you don't know and you, you don't like showers and stuff. And you're like, hey, what's going on, ladies? And everyone's like, whoa, no. 
that guy still deserves to to drop a load. Right. And if someone's going to do that for him, because none of us are, is that not a, uh, if I was Jewish, is that not a mitzvah? <laughs> Which <laughs> means you would automatically go to heaven for it? I feel sure. <laughs> it's a it's a jerk off mitzvah. Yeah, jerk, I know about Jewish mitzvah. stuff. I'm down with the Jews. Shout out to my Jewish friends. Yeah, and this is the thing: is is you know I didn't want to bring up his name, but you know he's been in the news a lot. You know Andrew Tate. That's how yeah. that's how he's getting all his riches in the in the days. He's got a lot of these guys who have that issue, and sometimes it's not that they're losers or they're ugly or whatever. It's literally that their standards are higher than they should be allowed. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's yep. like sometimes, and I think you know sometimes. You know, when they criticize internet porn and stuff like that, of course, I'm a proponent of it and I I don't agree with it to some half, but another half of me is kind of like, well, what does kind of suck about it is that a lot of these guys get the, they've been talking to girls online that aren't actually, that are just getting their money, but yeah. they start to be blinded and think that that's what they're able to get. Oh, okay. And so when they go wow. out in the real world it doesn't happen. and they're trying to date, these girls that are that level of, you know, internet, you know, sexy girl, that's not what they, right. they can't apply for those positions. They need reality. to, they need to apply. It's, it's like the same thing. I go for people sometimes that are way out of my league as well, but I kind of like not to be with anyone anyway. So I kind of like rejection. So I, I like sometimes seek out people that are like, oh, I can't get them. So I'm going to flirt with them. But you know, it's like, when they really believe that they can obtain that person that is like some celebrity or something, but they're like a, like a guy that lives with their mom in the basement. You know, that's why they all fall in love with that guys like Andrew Tate who are just like, you just need to work out and get rich. You are correct. That is a hundred percent accurate. That strong voice that's telling you blah, blah, alpha male ness. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I the problem is women. It's not you. It's women. Right. Yeah. I feel like the, the part that people try to make illegal for the sake of people that are in prostitution that don't want to be in it. That's a different story. Agreed. Mm. Agreed. Absolutely. But I feel like just banning it all is stupid. It's kind of like marijuana. Like if you just made it legal, then they would, you know, it would come from you know people that made it legally and didn't hurt anybody to bring it to you to sell. And I feel like if you made it legal, then there would be people that run businesses that take care of those people in a way where they don't have to hide. Mm. They can be up front and be like, I, I got security like, because I'm doing this. Yeah. I see it as the, like the amount of massive hypocrisy, too, with people that say the opposite. And then it comes out in the news. Right. This rich guy or famous yep. or religious, he hooked up with this prostitute. And, then, and it all comes out. Yeah, because everybody thing. needs to jizz. Like, it's just, it's everybody stunningly needs hypocritical a lot of times. Everybody needs to. Yeah. you know, Just let just them do it. It's just if you look at all of the religious repression that's been happening and like then you find out these like, you know, popes and everybody has been molesting children and like all this other shit like this. They haven't been jizzing. They haven't been jizzing. They've if gone, they could, if they were just allowed to go they've see. They've no jizz crazy. If they were allowed to just go see someone to do the service, yep. they get it done. Bob's but no, they have to hide it and do some shameful shit in the yeah. shadows. Yep. But I'm sure there were good reasons as well. I mean, eh. I think like mean pimps, you know, back in yeah, the day. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think there's a reason that prostitution right. became illegal. Obviously, like anything becomes illegal. There's yeah, getting someone for hooked it. on drugs and then convincing them to be a prostitute to get the drugs. Right. Yep. That is evil. It's evil. I know. I sex trafficked myself. Say what? Back in the day. Yeah. I mean, when I first started dancing and doing sex work, I was in Texas and I was a heroin addict. And oh I actually was um, not really technically sex trafficked. I was a willing component to it. I was like, you know, whatever. But I mean, this girl kind of like came up to me and she was like, um, I was homeless at the time. I was like panhandling for a slice of pizza. And she was like, hey, have you ever thought about, you know, doing like private shows or whatever? And I was like, uh, like, look at me, like I'm a bum. And she was like, no, she's like, I can kind of tell you have a nice body. And I'm like, you can, because I'm like wearing baggy clothes. Like you're kind of crazy. She's like, no, I actually think it'd be cool if you like maybe did a two girl show with me. Like, you know, just whatever. I think you should try it. And I was like, what? Like, are you talking about lady? And then she was like, um, so how much money are you going to make out here tonight? And I'm like, I mean, I'm going to get enough for some pizza and like, you know, maybe, you know, I didn't tell her some drugs, but I'm like, I'm trying to get like, you know, 30 bucks or something. And then she was like, you could make $300 an hour 
if you came with me. And she's like, if you don't like it, you never have to do it again. And I was like, okay. And um, so I went, I was like, well, oh, I was like, I don't have clothes for that kind of stuff. How and old were you at the time? I was like 24, wow. 24. She's like, um, I, you can wear my clothes. You look like my size. And she's like, that's how I can kind of tell that, you know, you'd be hot. And she took me to this bachelor party and it's like 25 guys sitting there. And wow. like, we walk in the door and they were like, hey, we don't have change. We don't have singles. Is it okay if we throw like fives, tens and twenties? And me and her looked at each other like, that would be fine. <laughs> and so what's really crazy is she put, she was just like, she put me in her schoolgirl outfit. She puts in the CD of, uh, it was, Crystal Method, remember that band? Oh yeah. <laughs> this is the 90s, guys. She puts in Crystal Method and I literally just knew instinctively what to do. I entertained the shit out of these guys. Like I just like, you know, strip my clothes off, I'm pouring beer down my chest, the the bachelor's at the bottom drinking the beer off me and like all this shit is just I killed it. I killed it. And then afterwards she's like, "Do you want to do the next show?" And I was like, "Yes." Wow. And then I worked for her for like three years. Oh my goodness. But did that involve sex or just um, dancing? Well, the truth of the matter is I had one client that I did have sex with. But this was because he liked to party and I liked to party. And so, you know what? He looked like Seinfeld. <laughs> wow. He looked just like Jerry Seinfeld. Like almost so much that sometimes I'm like, was that Jerry? I was very high also back then. <laughs> yeah. But um, oh he was gosh. a sex addict big time. Wow. And I would come over and um we would just do piles of cocaine and i was already high too and he did he knew that i was a heroin addict so and he didn't mind if i would like be in the bathroom for a while too so he was like yeah he was chill with whatever and like you know sometimes i'd come over to his house and he'd have already had a girl there that just left or some one time i came there was three girls passed out and then he was still because he did like viagra and coke all day so mm -hmm. wow um he was fun it sounds like jerry yeah i what does it no I, just... I, I didn't think so but it was like he looked so much like him like the the whole jeans with the shirt tucked in and everything right. like brown hair i was just like that is so jerry seinfeld but anyways it was it was texas it was the 90s it doesn't sound like it was that bad that's what i'm saying i i trafficked myself like literally was like you know i'm already strung out what am i doing you was know? there the guy in the room at those parties that was like ready to kick everyone's ass like that protected you you know oh uh, no so this solo? is the thing i worked for this couple Excuse me. I work for this couple. It was a girl and a guy, and I cannot remember their names for the life of me. I think my brain like blacked them out. Um, but they, so he, she would answer the phone. I had an ad in the paper that said I was a University of Texas cheerleader. <laughs> it's unbelievable to say now, but back then I had like bleach blonde hair, no tattoos. And um, so I was University of Texas cheerleader and she'd answer the phone and like um, pretend she was me. And then I'd show up, her boyfriend would drive me there. He'd collect the money up front. So, and right. he'd wait in the car for me. So I'd do the shows and then come out. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you ended up doing shows by yourself? All the time. Yeah. Yeah, after, the, after she showed me how, I was like, oh, this is what I do. And then I did that for, you know, like I said, the three years I was down in Texas, except for the year, like there was a year in between that I was locked up and then Wait, you that, did a year? It was nine months. For what? For selling drugs. Got busted. Yeah, I sold the heroin and I got in trouble for it. As actually my boyfriend at the time, I had a guy that I was with for six years. He was the one that was actually selling, but I had the apartment in my name, so it was under my name and his. So we both went to prison for nine months. Wow. Hey. Yeah. So you come out and decide to do what? Well, when I got out, I was like, I was, like the you know when you're in, I was like, I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna get sober. I'm gonna quit off. I'm gonna go back to school. I'm gonna get my life right. But when they let you out of prison, I had no clothes, no money, no food, no job, no ID. I can't get a job. I can't get an address without ID. I can't get an ID without an address. I can't get any of these things. And um jackie my ex at the time he got out the same day and we just we reunited on um in in austin texas where we were living and then we were just walking around the streets and we we're like both of us had been writing each other in prison we we're like yeah we're gonna get out and get get our shit together and we were sleeping behind some church and uh shit. then we run into some old customers of ours they you know that we used to sell heroin to and they were like Hey, what are you guys doing? No, oh, I thought you guys were in prison. We're like, we got out. They're like, do you want to, do you want to get high? And both me and him looked at each other like, yeah, oh. yeah, we do. <laughs> so we just went out. It's like the day we got out. We we're just like, oh, fuck it. You know, like, what are you gonna do? You can't get a job. You can't get a house. You can't get anything. And then when I also showed up at their house, I had saw that they 
when I was arrested, I didn't have anybody on the outside. Like at the, those years, my mom and sister were also always in and out of jail. So I had no one to call and they weren't in Texas anyways. They're in Washington state. I had no one to collect my things, you know, so I lost everything I owned. And, um, the, <laughs> these customers of ours broke into our apartment and took a bunch of the stuff. And so I'm in their apartment. I'm like, Oh, that, Oh, Oh, that looks familiar. <laughs> I was like, that's, oh. hey, that's mine. Oh, I was like, they're like, do you want it back? I was like, dude, I don't have anywhere to put it. You just yeah. keep it. I was like, I, don't, I just want this sewing kit back. That's all. Did anything happen in prison? No, I had a great time though. It was like- You had um, a great time. Yeah. Why? Because um, I'm easily institutionalized. I love not paying rent. And you know that's why I was homeless for so many years. And um, the the, okay, at this point I had, darkened my hair so my hair was all black and it was all stringy and all one length and i was super pale from being inside and doing drugs all the time and i was on uh i think i'd like kick methadone too recently and everything so i looked like a dead person i look like the gr i look like the grudge back then <laughs> and so um you know people down in the south are really superstitious and everybody in jail thought i was a witch like a real scary witch and yeah. so no one with me cool and i got like privileges that most white girls don't get in there because there's not a lot of white girls in there and the white girls are definitely minority oh, yeah. and um you know i got to sit at the table with everybody else you know the other white girls are on the floor <laughs> did you have any up. lesbian prison sex the thing is you know i'm i'm pan sexual and i would but there was like barely anybody there who even had teeth in the front it was not like right. it's not like a lot of hotness there yeah. was there was this one girl in there named alicia that was the finest girl in there and like i remember me and this other girl we're always pining over her and we were just like, oh my God, Alicia. And like, the, um, we had signed up for, uh, there's like an AA program you can join there. And I thought it'd look good in court if I joined it. So, um, but it's, it had its own little separate facility. And so I'm going to these little, it, it's it's literally like you're in a high school or something. It's like this, it, it looks like reform school girls, the movie, but like nobody's really hot. And um, <laughs> then, but the, but that girl Alicia and um, anytime it was time for her to take a shower, she would like tell us like me and the other girl. She knew that we liked to watch, and she loved it. She had a girlfriend though. Her girlfriend was Butchie, and Butchie was terrifying. Yeah. Butchie would like just stood there all the time with like the one pant leg rolled up or the fist in her hand. Oh like, dang! Cornrows is like, oh fuck you up, bitch. You know, like she was not in our unit, so we didn't have to like stress about her being there. Right. But if there was wreck or anything, or if she ever found out that we were like touching her yeah. girl. No, so we didn't touch her, but um, so it's like a group shower scenario. And then there's these like sinks with the mirrors and the, the mirrors look back to the shower. Yeah. So when she'd say, I'm going to go take a shower, we'd be like, oh, it's time to do laundry because they only did laundry like once a week and we wash our panties every day in the sink. With I'm so soap. glad I drove up here for this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I just want to. But keep going. So, so yeah, we're washing with some soap and we're just looking in the mirror and she's over there giving us the shower. Yeah. Show, and she's like, mm -hmm. She was like, oh, she had the gold tooth with the dollar sign. <laughs> in it, and she was like, oh, had some paw, dog paw prints going up her yeah, leg. Classic. And she was, oh, she, I, I wish I could explain how fine she was. She was like, mm -mm -mm, they don't make them like that no more. Wow. Wait, so how do you eventually, and I, I don't know your whole story. I'm assuming you eventually kick heroin. Yeah, yeah. And after you move out here? Or yeah, I basically, I moved to Portland for, I'll try to give a quick synopsis of that. So when I got out of jail, like I said, me and Jackie got back together and then we were daily dealing with each other for a little while. But I realized I was like, this is like a brother to me now. Like, I mean, we were drug dealers together for years and like we had lost kind of like a sex like attraction to each other. It was like that was gone. And he knew that I was one of my clients for a long time and that bummed him out. Seinfeld. Yeah, he Jerry. knew about Seinfeld. Yeah. And I did try to lie about it back then, which I'm not really cool with. I'm usually like pan with most of my partners and they know but like with that one i was like no i've never done that and like he knew yeah. and he was like not cool with it and i get that and i respect it but um anyways we ended up you know <laughs> breaking up and then i went back to work for that chick for a while and um oh yeah <laughs> this part i've told this on another podcast before if you guys ever watch stevie weeby you can just yeah uh we love him i'll add i'll add show. some more to the story or something but it's similar to i said it on there before but um 
I moved into a crack house because once again, I don't like paying rent. And so there's this crack <laughs> house that was like $200 a month to live in the pantry. And the, <laughs> the, this is a Texas pantry. So it's right. like the size of a studio here, but um, not really. It's like, it was like this room. Okay. It was like this big. And um, so I move in there and it's, um, it's, it's a male prostitution den crack house. Oh boy. So wow. there's a lot of like, it's it's right out there in the open. There's people trading sex for crack all day. And I'm just like, and the thing is like, this is, a, I lived, I paid rent there. So, okay, let me backtrack too. The guy who owned the house was a university, university of Texas professor that came out of the closet at the age of 60 and he couldn't really deal with it. He was like flipped out. So he just started smoking crack and then had all these guys live there. Wow. And like the, the person that introduced me to him was a guy that, like to buy heroin from me that was a crack dealer um <laughs> named steppa and um he, i loved him he was super cool but he had a little room there and he was like hey there's another room over here if you want to get it 200 bucks i was like i'm sold and so i showed up there and uh yeah so you know there's there's guys coming in there all the time to suck date for some crack and like uh the professor didn't really have money he was just letting all these people kind of live there for so cheap and he'd spend all his money on crack and coke so fast and he would just literally i'd be in the pantry wake up in the morning at noon or whatever like i always do open the door and he'd be like pretend that he's cooking or something and have the oven open because you can see on the other side there's the room where some guy's sucking some guy's dick and he'd be beating off watching like oh yeah and i'd open my door be like dude seriously do it somewhere else like yeah. i'd always be yelling at them for masturbating and right in this front should of be a sitcom this is <laughs> yeah it's a great episode i yeah. was just like guys i'm trying to just have a bowl of cereal you know and then he <laughs> he would literally like come to my room sometimes the professor guy and he'd just be like come over like a zombie just beating off towards my room and be like <laughs> hey can i borrow five dollars oh. and i'd be like if you go away and you'd be like yeah like, here get out of my room oh. and like <laughs> it was this shit all the time and i was just like this literally so overdosing three times oh. uh, going to prison like all that shit didn't really phase me as far as like getting me to quit drugs but like living in that house i was just like i need to sober up <laughs> that's what did it the that helped cracked in, yeah yeah, it helped a lot because I'm looking at these guys and I'm like, you know how people in a low situation also look like try to look down on other people, you know, mm. and I, I was like doing that. I, I was like, I'm never going to like suck dick for my drugs. You know, I'm not doing that shit. But I was like, I'm doing that. Basically, I'm not any better than these people. And how long till I'm like that bad, like as these guys are like, I'm so desperate all the time. And I'm like, this is only a matter of time, you know, so I was like. And I'm not looking down on people that, you know, trade sex services or anything like that. It's just for me, I didn't, um, I like to have sex only when I enjoy it. I don't really like to do it any other way. It's um, fair. I don't get wet for money or anything like that. So that's just my own thing. Um, but to How'd you each, get sober? Each of their own. So I started saving up from working with that girl. I was going, I was back working with her, you know. And still I was Still doing heroin. Still doing heroin. Yeah. Lying to her about it um lying i always lied about it i never told people you know like it's probably obvious to most people though excuse me chai tea anyway um i didn't tell her i didn't tell her boyfriend because also so this they literally did eventually start to want to sex traffic me they started getting really pimpy with me where they would be like um i had one guy who was a lawyer who would take me sometimes for a week and just do piles of blow with me and a bunch of strippers and he'd pay by the hour for a week Whoa. and they he he was like dying soon and so he's just blowing he was buying girls boob jobs he was like doing this like he was just hanging out with strippers all the time it was usually me and five girls every night just like doing piles of blow and drinking wine with him and shit and um so these this couple started being like they'd get checks from him and i'd be like hey can i get my check for that last show or whatever and they'd be like what do you want it for oh and i'd be like because it's my money and i want to like maybe like buy things and they're like what do you need i'll get it for you oh no and i was like no i want to have it yeah. and they started doing that shit with me and then they did this one night they did this like 
this is technically a date rape story, so trigger warning, people. Um, Because she wanted to do a two-girl show with me again, and I was like, sure, we did them all the time. She's like, we're going to go to this guy's house. And she's like, is it okay? Like, it's cool if, uh, you know, her boyfriend or whatever films it and whatever. I was like, yeah, it's fine. It's like a thing we do sometimes. But this, they were already acting weird. And then this night she was like, I want to do some ecstasy. Can we all do some ecstasy? And I was like, yeah, yeah. She's like, do you want the one cut with heroin or do you want the one cut with uh, speed? And I was like, what do you think? You know, so I took the sleepy one. She took the uppy one. And, um... And then she had like she even had me put it in her butt. That's the way she wanted to booty bump her. Oh yeah, I've done that to girls. Yeah, yeah have you? Yeah, I used to do, I used to date a stripper, and she would always uh, ask like I wanted to, but she was like, "Can you put them in my butt?" And I used to blow coke up their butts too. What? The Did you ever take it that way? No, because back then that would be too gay. Oh. Oh no, not my well, one time. I yep. yep. One time she put an e bomber in my butt. Yeah. What did it feel like? Because I've never done it that way. It was cool because I didn't get the poopies. It stopped me from wanting to get the poopies from doing drugs. Uh, it just like works straight it away. It seems like and... it would be the opposite. Yeah, no, it isn't. Same with Coke too. One time at a big party, I was like the designated blower. Boofer. Yeah. So I was just blowing E-bombers up and everybody was hot too. Oh, that's so it was hot. just like all these really hot girls. A couple of them had boyfriends and the boyfriends were like there helping like holding her hand while I put a straw in there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, it was quite a fucking... Did I just hear a sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like I just heard something. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, you know, I did that with her. And then the guy, also when we showed up, the guy was already wearing... <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. Oh, that's juicy. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, maybe not. I don't want to do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, she she we showed up. The guy's like super greasy already. He's like oh, all no. greasy stuff. I hate greasy. He's people. wearing a cock ring and a robe, and he has all these huge. This is the '90s still, also, and he had all the hugest TVs they could make back then, just all over, already blasting porn in every room. And then, and he's already beating off too. And like, I like this guy. I like him too. He was stylish, yeah. you know. He, he was he was on some next level shit. And um, anyway, the and he didn't even try to f- us. He just wanted to do like live viewing. And she told me that too. He's not gonna try to fuck us. And she she was like, but I'm gonna like pretend to fuck you with this dildo. And she had this giant dildo. And I was like, pretend for sure. She's like, yeah, you know, of course, pretend, pretend. How do you pretend that? Well, she's gonna put on a strap on and make it look like oh, she's okay for yeah. the video, you know. And then uh, she's like, but um, it would be cool if I tie you up and stuff, too. I was like, yeah, sure. Dude, the f- ecstasy she gave me started hitting me. I couldn't lift my face off the ground. I was floored. I was I was murdered. And then she literally did, like, f- me with the thing. And I couldn't even say anything. I was, like, paralyzed. It's and horrible. Yeah, it was, like, not too horrible because there was no pain. Um I didn't feel anything, but I also was just like, I just got scammed. Yeah. You know, like, and after that, I was like, these people, you know, like I'm getting out, you know? So I started like, give you money for that one. I think I did get some money Uh, for that one, but they still owed me like thousands on these guys checks, you know? So every other money that I was getting, I, and um, any tips and everything, I'm just squirreling away. I squirreled away $6,000. Nice. And then, yeah. And then I just, I had also this whole time I had a dog that I got um, from some street kids that was a Sharpe Pitbull mix. And that's the other part of the reason I got sober because living in that crack house, I felt like it's going to get raided eventually, just like my house Uh, did when I was arrested. And I was like, they're going to just kill this dog. But like you personally at this time, I have to ask, like, how's your soul? Are you feeling like dark? Are you feeling lost? I was completely hopeless. Completely hopeless. Completely like did Mm. not believe there was a way out, honestly. Still was just going to take the chance for that dog, honestly. I was just like, I got to get him out of this. Like, I'm fucked, but at least got to get him out of here. And so I got a plane ticket for both me and that dog and flew us up to Portland, Oregon, because my sister was already up there and she had already actually been out of rehab for a year. She went through a program that I ended up going to called the Mentor Program, which I highly recommend because they deal with a lot of... They're they're ex-addicts that... um, 
became counselors and so they know your bullshit you can't yeah. bullshit them like you can bullshit regular yeah. counselors which i was gonna do if you know yeah. like when and these guys are all ex-cons too so yeah. they knew all the so game, they knew the bullshit you know and so i couldn't go there and be like i'm gonna hang out with so and so they'd be like who you know like and the, the things that give you like a key to a place your only thing is you just have to have uh clean uas and just go to 90 meetings in 90 days to pay your rent basically yeah. Yeah. And that worked for me. I just needed a stable place to And you did it. Recover. One yeah. shot. Yeah. Cuz you never went back, did you? No. No, um I mean I tried to uh do rehab some years before and failed. Okay. But so this but was this my time second worked. time. Yeah. And then completely sober of everything, yeah. right? Yeah. I have I just caffeine is the hardest I go. Right. And that's been how many years it's, now? It's um well in February to be like 22 years. So wow. we're coming up on It's fucking awesome. Some Congratulations. Time. Yeah, you know. You're a warrior. Fucking miracle, they so, say. So then, though, after that, are you thinking to yourself, I'm going to get out of the, the sex stuff? Or are you like, I'm going to stay? No, this is- I really wanted to go back to dancing. Okay. Not that way. I didn't. I, I do like the private shows, but I knew I could never do it without having a security like that. And um, the system that they had was really good. Like I said, I had sex with one guy, but everybody else, it was just dancing. Okay. And I and I liked, and, and the thing was too, is like, we got the money up front. So clients knew if they touched me, show's over. Right. Uh, like I could walk out the door. I'm like, don't touch me. We're good. And I'm like that. I'm kind of like, I, I only like being touched when it's on my, like, uh, whatever. I think a lot of people are like sure, that. Sure, absolutely. Um, anyways, um, I wanted to go back to dancing right away. Just in, I was in Portland. They have all the greatest clubs, you know, and my rehab was like, no, you're going to go back to using, sure. you shouldn't do sex work. Honestly, for a lot of people, they're probably right for, I, for, so for two years or a year and a half or something, I tried to go to college and I was not very good at it. I, well, I got my GED. I took some classes. I was like, I'm going to be a Spanish translator. And I studied Spanish for a couple of years and I, Muy, muy gringa. I cannot speak Spanish to this day. Yeah. I'm like, entiendo, piquito. Habla más espacio, por favor. Ooh. But it's like, I just fun. not. I it, like, I have to. I've gone to Mexico many times and I try to immerse myself. And still, it's like, I just can't get it. It's too hard for my little brain. So then to dancing, you go. So after two years of, I did the steps, I did all the stuff. I got, you know, had a sponsor, worked a program, get to meetings every day. Um, I just told my rehab, you know, like, well, it's not, I'm not, I'm out of rehab. Like it was only six month program, but my counselors, I'd still talk to all the time. I was like, you know what, for me, um, I know you guys say that this dancing, stripping isn't spiritual work, but also neither is Taco Bell. So I'm going to go <laughs> work in this strip club because I'm going to kill myself if I had to work a regular job. That's just the way I am. Yep. Like I'm not meant for that and it, I can't um, stay sober doing that work. Right. So I'm going to do what makes me happy. And that's what I did for 20 years and I loved it. Wow. And I stayed sober the whole time working in bars and I don't recommend it. Not everyone can do it. Um, but alcohol is also never a problem for me and that's a big plus for me yep all right yeah. and then your diet maybe because you quit all those bad things you had to eat something bad were you always a vegetarian or when did that start? i think i always had a vegetarian soul and i think yeah. part of that is my grandma and grandpa are missionaries for the seven day adventist church and they're vegetarian mm. ah. and so i was in veget i was in, in seven day adventist yep teachings most of my life and that was the one thing that i actually really respected about that religion even though i don't really like religions but i can i i disregarded all religions after reading just about every every religion that i cared to read about because all of them condemn uh bisexuality homosexuality or they just aren't uh embracing of it and yeah. i i'm i always knew i was and i didn't want to be in any religion that doesn't agree with the way i am yeah so um i couldn't get with the religious part but i i just thought veg and I just have always been. A, I love animals more than people. So and I know a lot of people will hate on me for saying that, but I don't care. It's just the way I am. Yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah. So you don't drink water, but you do, I do. now. I do but drink water, changed. but it's it's. I have to force myself to drink it. I you hate it. I I won't even say that anymore because that's part of the psychology. Yeah. Is to even say that I hate it. I try to say. I'm, I prefer chai, but yeah. I, sh- you know, I, or I prefer, you know, teas and stuff, but, um, water is good and I should drink more water. Yeah. I've had kidney stones, so I should drink more water. Yeah. 
kidney stones are directly related to the fact I don't drink enough water. Right. So you do that, but you still like pizza and uh, bean and cheese. I've gotten way better at eating healthier since um, I had some health issues um, recently. So I've been, you know, some inflammation joint stuff. So I've been, I tried like an anti-inflammatory diet for a while and I still kind of do that as much as possible. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So you feel better? I do. I do feel a lot better. I think the steroids really helped me to get out of the, uh, it was like a reactionary um, uh, inflammation. Steroids? Yeah, I got steroids for a little bit. Steroids are awesome. I was roid raging. Everybody knows that. Dude, I did not like them though. They were harsh for me. You're like a vegetarian liver king. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. You have the vegetarian liver king. Except you tell the truth. You're on steroids and you eat vegetables. I'm not on them anymore. I only took them for a week. Damn it. Do I you, know. Do you do anything now? Because you're such an open book. I mean, as far as trying to help other people that may have been in the situation you were in, like other women, or I, I think this is helpful just telling your story. But yeah. do you have any advice, like for people that are going down that road? Like, I mean, you're just, I, I don't know. Like, I always keep my Instagram open for yeah. that. So a lot of people know that I was in a documentary in the 90s called Black Tire Heroin Dark into the Streets. It's been on YouTube forever and it's, it was on HBO back in the day. A lot of people find me through that on mm-hmm. YouTube and I get DMs all the time of people asking me about recovery. The only thing is that most people don't want to hear it. Right. You know, yeah. um, I don't, I don't want to preach it. That's the reason I don't really go mm-hmm. out and help people. If somebody, if anybody ever asked me to speak at meetings or speak, I've done hospitals and institutions before or other organizations like that where you go and talk to people. And I would love to go back and talk to people in prisons. That would be great. It's yeah. it's kind of hard to get in on those. But um, yeah, it is, it's weird because there's like a, what do you call it? There's like little cults in, in the meetings too. Sure. Sometimes it's sure. hard to get in. What's the craziest story you have for me when it comes to being a dancer? Like what what is a scenario where you're like, wow, I've never seen this before. I've never seen. Um, I feel like just, I mean, just like stuff in Texas, like with the guy that was like having all these strippers, like we played uh, truth or dare every night and sucked each other's titties and pussies and like, you know, just did what, but all playfully. It was like having a week long um pillow fight like like it was like slumber party massacre like all the time just like you know babes and we'd go to strip clubs and grab new girls and you know just it was that was to me like it was heavenly yeah. like that's what I'm, i was like i there's no other way i could probably live this part of life but being uh fuck up actually so i'm glad in some respects that i had that life because i got to enjoy some shit that i only fantasized about as a young girl and like i'm just surrounded by boobs you know (laughs) i totally relate to that yeah but you're also surrounded by creepy potentially dangerous situations the one guy just that that's and and that's the thing is through my life the most dangerous stuff i ever dealt with was not in stripping it was those years of being homeless and hitchhiking by myself all the time i hitchhiked by myself in the 90s did anything get weird in that I think wow. the, I think the the I might have told this story before to you on another episode. I swear I did. Oh, I hit my head a years lot. ago. Yeah. But y- y- you guys out there, if you recognize this story, I'm sorry once again. My my best I've stories are my it. best stories. I want to hear it. But there was a time I hitchhiked from San Francisco to Seattle. Um, I had already, you know, I was a heroin addict, so I had already been doing heroin. And then, of course, on the uh, ride up. The first guy that picks me up is this cool truck driver. He's like fucking blasting motorhead. He's leaning out the side of the truck when I, the minute I get in, he's like, fuck off, mother, you know, just yelling at these other truck drivers to get out of the way or whatever. Yeah. And like, I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I get in and he's and he's got a pimped out truck, like the inside, you know, some of them really pimp out their trucks. His was like, nah, he had the lights, he had the sexy yeah. time, everything. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is, he's got mirrors everywhere. I was like, oh, he's partying. And so he's like, you want to do some speed? I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course he wanted to do some speed. So I'm with him for three days. We're doing fucking line after line. He never tried to fuck me. He didn't do nothing. He was the coolest motherfucker. And like, he's like, 
you know, just at the end of the ride, he's just like, eh, it was good hanging out with you. I was like, you too. And he's like, thanks for keeping me awake. I was like, thanks for keeping me awake too, Whoa. you know? It was just like, that guy was cool. But, so he drops me off in Portland. And then I'm thinking, that I'm on this fucking awesome trip. Like, I'm having these great rides. And then this lady picks me up in this fucking hot Trans Am. She's a beautiful Latina lady. Like, I'm just like, oh my God, she's so hot. I was like, I've never been picked up by a lady before, Jesus. You know, back then I looked a lot more butch like especially if i was hitchhiking i'd wear baggy clothes carry a skateboard and wear a beanie and just try to look more like like a little boy or whatever which is also why i got a lot of truck drivers picking me up and then a lot of them would be bummed to find out i wasn't a boy oh my actually god that was i didn't yeah sorry about that but that is actually most this is the things most of the guys i knew when i was homeless that they were all hopping trains. They told me that they never hitchhiked because they would always get raped if they hitchhiked. Oh my God. And I was like, oh wow, well that doesn't happen to me. You know, of course it could have happened to me too. It just, I got lucky, but um, I just wasn't their type. Wow. Um, so anyway, um, after <laughs> that guy drops me off in Portland and the girl picks me up and she's taking me to Tacoma. I'm going to Seattle, but she's like, I can drop you off in Tacoma. I'm like, it's close enough i guess i can bus it from there but she drops me off it's like midnight or something um so buses aren't running anymore i don't know if any of you have ever been to hilltop tacoma Mm -mm. not at midnight at the bus stop continue (laughs) hilltop fucking maniac hilltop tacoma in the 90s was nothing but crack deals going down it was sketch sketch as fuck and back then so at this time i'm 17 this was even earlier this is before i ever was a stripper this is before everything i just said i I was just a baby homeless and i had (laughs) this is the thing this is like such early days that i had like hair down to my ass that was all blue dreads like i only had that literally for a few i had that for a few months because my hair naturally dreaded from hitchhiking and being oh homeless. I wasn't trying to have dreads, you guys. I wasn't oh trying. God. I just was homeless, okay? This is the first time officially that you've been nasty to me. I know, I'm, I'm like, so oh, sorry. Oh, Malice, Listen, really? It's not as bad as it... Look, can it, you okay, bum that up if you're going to hang out with me? Because I don't want it to touch me. I literally <laughs> shaved it as soon as I got back to the Northwest. I just couldn't... And I, whatever. I didn't have the apparatus there. Anyway. Anyway, I'm sorry. But... um the so i looked crazy yeah. to be in that neighborhood i did not belong everyone knew it i'm sitting at like this corner store um right by the freeway debating on should i continue to try to hitchhike because it's illegal to hitchhike off the freeways in washington state um you can get arrested just doing that and um then it's dark no one's going to see me also so I'm like, oh, should I just go find a bush to hide out in until the morning or something? Oh my sleep there? God. I'm just trying to debate my scenario. The, <clears throat> the whole time I'm thinking about what I should do, like multiple dudes, like crack dealer looking de- dudes came up to me and were like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And um, I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, this is so bad. This is not good because everyone can tell I'm not supposed to be here. And then finally, like the fourth guy, I was like, I'm going to something bad's going to happen tonight. I might as well like go with somebody. And he's like, the the fourth guy comes up and he's like, you need to get out of here. And I was like, I know. And he's like, he's like, I'm going to take you down to the Greyhound station and we're going to get you out of here. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. So a I, homeless guy. No, this is like a dealer looking dude. Okay. And, um, I noticed also that he walked with a limp. So I was like, okay, if he tries anything, I can run from him because he's right. limping. And that's automatically what I'm thinking. Oh my God, I forgot. My doctor is calling me. <laughs> the steroid dealer. Um, no, but anyways, the guy uh, walks me to the Greyhound station. The Greyhound station is closed. And then he's like, shit, what are we going to do with you? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> he's like, um. He's like, it's really not safe for you to be here. And I'm like, I know. I really don't. I don't have a choice. Um, this is where I got dropped off. And he's like, He's like, you can hang out with me for a little bit, like, but you have to, you know, be really quiet. Don't say anything. You know, I'm like, okay, fine. So I'm like walking around with him. He's selling drugs. You know, he's selling some crack. He's got people coming up to him trying to like get deals. This lady's like, um, he's dealing with someone else. And this lady comes over to me and she's like, tell him, tell him this gold is real. Tell him this gold is real. And I was like, I don't know if it's real. I don't know anything about gold. And she's like, just tell him it's real. And I'm like, she's like, and don't tell him I'm pregnant. And I'm like, what? <laughs> 
what is happening? Oh my God. Like all this fucking crazy shit's going on. And then he's walking down the street with me and this, um, this carload of guys like pulls up and like stops right in front of him and they jump out. And he's like, he's like push, pushes me behind and they come up to him and like start fucking yelling at him and something. And he was like, no, no, she's not working. She's not working. Like they thought yeah, like yeah. he was pimping me on their street. Yeah. And like, so that made me kind of also feel safer with him. You know, I was like, oh, gee, I just almost got in trouble just for walking down the street. You yeah. know, like people think I'm on their turf, like, oh, get me out of here. You know, and then he was like, seriously, I'm telling you, you can't be out here. And I'm like, I fucking do. He's like, let me take you to my cousin's house and um, so I can deal with some shit. He probably had to re up or whatever. He's like, yeah, I'm going to stash you here for a minute until I can see if my cousin can take you up to Seattle. So I'm like, hey, OK, cool. So I'm sitting in this house with his friend or cousin or whoever and his his wife or girlfriend or whatever and they're sitting there and they're like smoke they start to smoke some crack and they look at me and they're like you want to hit and i was like oh no i'm trying i'm trying to quit yeah. and they're like i said you want to hit and i was like oh yeah sure because i was like oh they think i'm a narc yeah. and i was like i can't like i never smoked crack before but i was like here we go Oh my goodness. Oh. I mean, at the time I'd shot heroin, but like, what's the big difference? But really, like, crack was not my thing. And so I smoked crack that first time. And I guess, you know, the first time you smoke crack, it's like PCP ish. Yeah. Whatever, where it's like you. Have you guys smoked crack? Yeah. All the time. What, the no, first time's no, different no, no, than no. the other times, right? Uh. No, I thought the second time got me. Maybe it was like different stuff, but whatever. No. Oh, okay. I was like, this is really good. I could do this again. Don't ever do it again. <laughs> yeah, I did That's it. That's what I said. I've done it multiple times and I've even shot it up and I never liked it. Yeah, you can shoot it up if you break it down with lemon. Oh, okay. It's For really... the listeners out there, <laughs> Don't good do life that. advice. Don't do that. But shit, lemon that was... is the key. <laughs> it's disgusting and it makes it, it feels like there's dirt in your body. It's really oh. gross. Oh my God. But, um, yeah, I've I've shot. So up anyway, everything. you smoked the crack with these people. <laughs> but yeah, so I I hit the pipe. I hit the pipe, guys. And then um, I'm literally like sitting there, like you know where um, Superman goes to the ice cave. Yeah. Like that's like where I was. I was just like iced out, just like zoning. And like the dude comes back, and um, he sits next to me, and I, and he starts smoking some crack with his friends, and he's taking a break, I guess, from dealing or whatever. And he starts to, you know, he's high and he starts to look at me now and he's like, you know, we could fix you up. And I'm like, oh. yeah, sure, sure. You could. Yeah. Like, yeah, we just get, get brush out that hair or something, like put you in something cute. You could make money. Oh, no. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could. He's like, I could make you one of my girls. And I was like, yeah, yeah, we could be the, we could do that. That'd be fucking cool, dude. Like, yeah. You know, cause I'm fucking high and yeah. I'm just like, and I was just drifting and I'm dr dreaming. And, uh, all of a sudden the fucking like cloud pops. It's just like, boom. And I'm like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not staying here. I need to get out of here. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. He's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. That's right. You're getting out of here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh God. Okay. Oh my God. And so then. He's like, oh, yeah, let's take you to my cousin's house. So we go over there and then he's is so late now. It's like th three, four in the morning or something. I don't know, five in the morning. I don't know. It's like getting late. And I, I had already been, you know, doing dope in San Francisco just days before three days of being high on speed with this truck driver. I'm fucking crashing off the crack and everything. I'm so tired. And like we get to this cousin, this other cousin guy's house. And it's like. It's crazy too, like the set design of this place. <laughs> like it's all white walls with a bunch of religious stuff in there. And like the TV is blasting some like um, religious speaker, you know, and like all this shit. And I'm just like, oh, this is really cool. And um, I just like see the bed and I just go for it. I'm like, I just need to lay here for one minute. So I lay down and then the guy like gets in bed with me and he lays next to me and I'm like, oh, fuck. But I'm so tired. Hey. I'm just like, oh, fuck it. God damn it. He's just laying here. And he's like, yeah, we got to wait a little while for my, you know, friend to get off work and then he can take you up there. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I'm laying there and then he starts to put his hands in the pants. And I'm like, no, nah, dude, no, nah, dude, I'm so tired. I'm just really tired, dude. And he's like, mm, does it again. And then, you know, he's really trying to go for it. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. 
here we go. This is going down. And then, you know, and then he grabs me and he starts getting ready to like pull down my pants and all this shit. And they're like, I'm like, here we go. Here we go. I'm getting, I'm getting it tonight. It's finally happening. This is the end. And then he, he he's like, I was crying. He's like, why are you crying? Like, I'm in love with you. And I'm like, no, no, you're high on crack. And I'm, and I'm coming off crack. And it's just like, we're not really, this is, I just don't want to do this, dude. And he's just like, dude, don't be sad about it. Like, I really love you. I care about you. I was like, dude, no, I don't want this. And he, you know. He's, I'm just like, but I'm kind of giving up and I'm barely fighting because I'm just like, dude, I'm so fucking tired. I don't have the energy to fight this guy. And um, then I was uh, I was just kind of like gave in. I was like, fuck it, dude, just fucking do it. And then I was like, nah, fuck that. You know, like I got like my, my energy back. I was like, fuck this. He's got a fucked up leg. I can run. And so I just fucking shoved him off me and I ran out the door. And by that time, the buses were running and I got on one and I got away. Oh God. <laughs> dude I, you have you may not be religious but you have a fleet of guardian angels i think Something. because us us heavy, heavy i lucked heavy. out yeah Holy i thought that time it was shit, happening didn't, but that's the closest it, like that's the worst thing Holy that almost happened in it. shit what a story wow. i've known it for fucking ages and i didn't know that well, no like i've met you a couple I've times i've interviewed you like fucking 10 story. times and i didn't know that i asked the wrong mm. questions the last 10 times it's oh, heavy wow heavy and thank you for sharing yeah I, yeah i mean these situations and you're out there freestyling doing your huck finn lifestyle out on the road and this is the kind of shit you're ending up really in. i do think about all the time like the, the so many things could have gone wrong like i think about yeah. life as like a choose your own adventure book yeah and there's so many times i chose the wrong adventure yep. and it's so should have ended up bad but i somehow skirted it yeah, so freaking lucky yep Oof. like cannot believe it yeah yeah i can i thought i got away with it but you went yeah i mean and the od story is the same thing you know left out on the street to die someone on a bicycle seeing me <clears throat> calling an ambulance gave you the narcan brought you back um to they life. didn't even have i don't even know if they had narcan back then maybe, maybe they did no they probably did. probably did i got the shock paddles oh yeah that <laughs> So your heart stopped at yeah. some point. You yeah. Got I'm right. in the ambulance and yeah. I got defibbed and woke up, quit trying to kidnap me. Right. Oh, and they're man. like, you were dead. And I'm like, I was sleeping. <laughs> and they're like, no, you were dead. And I'm your like, bullshit. Was sleeping. Yeah. And they get me to the hospital. This is San Francisco. And um, they get me to the hospital. And I'm like, no. And I'm like trying to get away from them. And the ho the doctor comes over and the, the ambulance drivers are like, um, the, he's like, what is she in here for? Cause you know, he's busy, he's doing his shit. And the, they're like, she just OD'd. And he's like, let her go back out and kill herself. We got people trying to live over here. And I was like, see? And so I ran out. I feel I feel like, I'm sorry, but just for the listeners, and you don't have to talk about it if you don't want, but the childhood, normal, not normal? No, definitely not, not normal. Not normal, okay. Yeah. Obviously, right. I mean, yeah. I, I don't wanna say obviously, but it is, like, yeah, of course. There's I was in foster care, okay. child abuse, all that stuff. I'm friends with my mom now. I forgave everybody. I have a great relationship with my sister. Um, I mean, we are in foster care together and then we were split up and both of us became heroin addicts and wow. both of us got in recovery. And she's got a year or two years sober, more sober than me. I don't know, but we've both been sober a long you're time. Not, you're not, you and your sister are not the usual story. No. That's not how this book ends. And, no, and you're your, also your book is rewritten and it's happening right now i just you're an impressive human yep. you truly well, are even the one with my sister like my sister also for a while after uh out of foster care she was dating also abusive dudes right. which is like the typical pattern you yeah. were abused as a child and then you date this asshole these assholes and um you know the same thing like she broke that cycle because she doesn't do you know she got sober and she like bettered herself and she now she owns her own tattoo shop and has people working for her and doesn't wow. and dates someone who's super sweet and like you know both of us came from like trailer trash and whatever you know you want to call it and like got out of it wow. well i've always loved you you're the best i've always been a fan i also obviously want to have sex with you incredibly a lot but it's beside you're it's I probably wearing off in I'm, these days it's not Ask Katie. It's Aww. not. It's not. So, such I mean, a, I mean, I know only fans that I go, sweet, Katie. Such a oh, sweet sentiment. Just fucking one time and fucking come on. I do it all the time. Oh, it makes me so happy. Yeah, I totally bone up for you. I will until I die. 
Yay. So don't worry about that going away. Keep the resistance. Yeah, and, and you're getting older, but so am I, Malice. That's true. So it's kind of still... That's true. We all, yeah. we all are getting yeah. older. True. It's still total even, Stevens. All right. <laughs> no matter how much time goes by, you're still my type. Thank you. Yeah. So thanks so much for being on the show and rushing here. This is a last minute thing. It's a great thing about living in the valley, everybody. I get to see Malice. I'm fucking pumped. Jonathan, amazing work, dude. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to be here. Tully obviously had to, couldn't great. be here and you I mean, fucking came through, dude. You're on fire. It's all her. I just... No, uh, I disagree. No, you did an excellent sharing, job. I mean, this is... Yeah, your co-hosting was I amazing. Love, He's amazing. I, I'm going to listen to this. I'm going to yeah. re-listen to this because it was fascinating. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, prou I'm proud of you. Some nice for, rainy day stories for everyone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it is a rainy, a day, rainy story. day podcast. Oh, yeah. shit. And Malice, where can we find you and all of your works? Well, I'm still somehow official Malice McMahon on Instagram until they one day figure out how to get rid of me. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Malice666McMahon on Twitter slash OnlyFans. Hello. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it for now, I guess. I am working on getting some clothing stuff online, but that's for, you know, later. Cool. Thanks, Malice. Love you. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Check out our Patreon shows, patreon.com slash Alice, mate. Uh, we're out here hustling. Have a good one. Don't die.